how-to video from us at the depot. I'm Chris T and today's topic is an interesting one and something many of you may not do or may not know how to do. It's the class 1 brake test or initial terminal brake test to some. We're here at Selkirk with an outbound train. We just need to perform the class 1 test and an EOT dump test and it's good to go. Before we begin, a slight disclaimer. The info I'll be providing will be based off of rules and experiences I've had at NS. Some railroads might do things a little different but the test itself is an FRA rule and a federal law. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, now we're up in the cab. We've got the automatic brake applied to the full service position. You'll notice there's an EOT no -com on there too as we haven't hung the EOT, also known as the marker yet. So let's go ahead and release the automatic first and charge the train up before performing the test. With the release, you'll notice the flow go up and it'll come back down before leveling out. As the air moves through the train, the flow will drop. 60 PSI on the flow gauge is considered a full release. So we'll go ahead and move the throttle to notch one to assist uh, with charging the train line here. Or two. <laughs> All right, now we got the flow down to 60. We'll go ahead and knock it back to idle. And we've got, we've got a full release here. So uh, let's go on the ground and uh, start the next uh, next step of the process. Alrighty, now we're on the ground outside the train. And the first step in uh, starting our class on brake test is to bring up the train graph in the heads up display. Left shift B will bring up the train graph. As you can see here, each piece of rolling stock is represented, the engines and the cars. Engines show up as the E's, as denoted by the two on the head end, and the cars are dashes. The upper row of dashes represent the in-train forces at work, or the slack. The bottom row is what we're concerned with. This represents the brake status of each car in a train. First service or a minimum reduction is a 5 pound reduction on the brake pipe and is shown as red to orange. Full service is a 25 pound brake pipe reduction and it's purple. The rule for a class 1 brake test states that the train must be charged to within 15 psi of the feed valve, which our first release did. That covered that. The next part is that the brakes on each car must apply in response to a 20 PSI brake pipe reduction. So for this next part, we'll hang the EOT to help verify that. So a quick jump to the rear of the train back here. And click the coupler, attach EOT options. Not, don't think the menu shows up in the feed, but uh, there we go. We got the marker hanged. With EOT attached, we now have a way to tell if we are indeed getting an apply and release on the rear of the train. So we'll bring up the train status in the heads up display that's left shift C. Brings up all of the uh, uh, things that the engine is doing up there. So we need a 20 pound brake pipe reduction. So we'll apply the brakes until the equalizing reservoir or the ER up in your display there reaches 70 pounds. So here comes your application. Showing 70 on equalizing reservoir. There it is. After we do that, hit left, shift B again. Bring the train graph up and see the air working. You can see the color changing there as the air applies throughout the train. And it moves front to rear. So you can see we're getting an application throughout the train. In the real world, you'd have to walk this train and visually inspect each brake cylinder on each car to ensure you have an application. But this graph works just the same, considering we don't have working brake cylinders within the sim. Now, we'll jump back to the cab, up to the head end, let the air sound play. Alright, the marker's now moving. Is it showing the brake pipe reduction throughout the train? Oh, there it is again. It'll slowly come down if we get 70. It'll uh, it'll show a successful application. You can now see the marker showing 70 pounds on the rear. We've got a good application. Now let's release the air. Give it a minute here. It should come up. It'll detect the flow of air, and there it is. There are EOTs changed, so now you know we're getting a release. But you need to make sure that all the dashes in the graph turn white to show that the cars have released. Because you need an apply and a release. So you see them changing air yellow, and the head end will turn white, and it will slowly move throughout the train. As soon as they all turn white, that is a good release. And that is the, uh, that is the end of the Class 1 initial terminal brake test. Right there, they've all, they've all released. We're good to go. So let's add an extra step to it, and we'll go back 
and we'll do the EOT dump test. To do the dump test, some of you may not have even known this, uh, you need to go into the F1 menu and uh, set a key command to initiate the rear end uh, dump. In both the keyboard and rail driver tabs on the F1 screen, there will be a command called Emergency Brake EOT. This will allow you to dump the train from the rear by hitting this key command. On my rail driver, I use the E stop switch down. That's what I use to, uh, to dump the marker from the head end. Uh, on the SD70 ACEs, there is a toggle switch on the control stand that will work. It's the only unit this works in. You flip the you flip the cover up, and then if you click the click the toggle switch, it'll initiate emergency application from the rear. So we'll leave the train graph up here to start this, and we need to go back here and close this angle cock between the last car and the second to last car. Any one will work. We'll just close this one here. Actually, we'll do the box car so you can physically see the angle cock's closed. Okay. You got the angle cock closed. Hit the key or the button on your rail driver that you use to initiate the dump test. And pay attention to the very last dash in the car here. And there's the dump test. The color of the car changes because you've closed the angle cock and the, the, the emergency application has dumped this car. That's how you can verify that the marker has dumped without dumping the entire train. So that is a successful dump test. That's what I consider a dump test. If you want to, you can uh, jump back up to the cab real quick on the head end. And if you notice, the rear is now showing zero. So it knows that you've done a dump test. Oh, while we're up here real quick, here's that uh, toggle switch I was talking about. You can flip that and you uh, click that again and it'll initiate the dump test and the cover will automatically drop if you don't respond to it. So. We need to go back to the rear real quick, over here, let it settle down, partially open it, give it a minute too, don't don't just go tearing right into it because you could dump the train, so give it just a, give it a second, you hear the air running, about the time that the air quits is probably a good time to cut it back in. So you can also see the train graph too, that the air, the air is changing throughout the train with that opening of that uh, angle cock there. So, we should be good. Open it all the way. All right, it didn't dump. And that's it. That's a class one brake test. That's an EOT dump test. You're good to go. You can now depart with your initial terminal done and everything, that's it. Uh, one thing to note for everybody here, that none of this is a requirement to run into depot server. This isn't a rule that we have. This isn't. This is not a requirement by any means. This is, this is something you can do to bring a little bit of realism into the sim for yourself. Um, if you just do it in a yard before you depart, if it's the originating uh, terminal. This is an originating initial terminal where it originates. So, you know, if you go out and you get a train out in the siding someplace or it's tied down on a main somewhere, you don't need to do this because that train is technically, you know, it's already been tested. It's already been dump tested. It's done. It's out on the road. It just needs a recrew, a blow and go. You know, just to make sure you've gotten apply and release on the rear, and you can depart. So, just a little, uh, little something fun you could do to try bring it home a little bit to you. So, I know there's a lot of information to cover, a lot of technical stuff in there, and uh, but so hopefully I covered it well. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, we'll get a couple more out there, do some more uh, fun stuff like this. So, uh, take care, guys, and uh, have fun out there.